in the introduction we already talked about symmetric matrix vector multiply and in this section we are going to abstract away from the details by slicing and dicing the matrix. So let's very quickly review how you slice and dice a symmetric matrix and what this means about the different parts of it. What we're going to see is that inherently we are going to want to partition the matrix into quadrants. And the fact that this is a 4x4 four four matrix and I happen to make it into 2x2 two two matrices is just coincidental. This could have been a larger matrix. And what do you notice? Well, we can label these different pieces of the matrix as A top left, A top right, A bottom left, and A bottom right. Like that. See? That, 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 that. Okay? Now, what are some properties? Notice that if a matrix is symmetric, it is a square matrix. If you then partition it so that this is a square matrix and therefore that is a square matrix, then this matrix is symmetric, as is that matrix. Okay, so A top left is inherently symmetric, as is A bottom right, if these are square matrices, which is what we're always going to make sure they are. And what else do we notice? Well, it's a symmetric matrix. And something that you may have learned is that if you transpose a partition matrix, then it's the same as transposing a 2 by 2 matrix. What would that mean? Leave this one in place, move this one up here, move this one down here, and leave this one in place. Except that you also have to transpose each of the pieces. And what does that mean? If the matrix is symmetric, then it is its own transpose. And what does that mean? Then A top right is actually the same as A bottom left transpose. So, for a symmetric matrix, we only need to store half of the matrix because if you, for example, store the lower triangular part, you can recover what the upper triangular part is. And what we notice is that this submatrix here is simply that submatrix except transposed. Okay? So, what does that mean? Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. If we now choose not to store this, then we can recover what's there by saying, oh, that's just a bottom left transpose. Now, if we multiply with a partition matrix, and it's just this times that plus this times that, etc., but you can also think of it as this times that plus this times that, and this times that plus this times that. So, if we then multiply with a symmetric matrix, where we only store the lower triangular part, then we can think of taking the vector that we multiply and partitioning it into a top part and a bottom part, where the number of elements here is the same as the number of columns here. And then if you work it out, the top part of the result is this times that plus this times that. And the bottom part of the result is this times that plus this times that. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you have to go and take this matrix and create a copy of it that's transposed in order to multiply. No, it just means that you have to compute with it as if it were multiplied. Now, how do I remember this? I always go back and say, well, if I had a 2 by 2 matrix that I multiplied times a vector, then I would do that as that times that plus that times that for the top part, and this times that plus this times that for the bottom part. 
exactly the same thing here except with symbols. The catch being you can't commute. Okay? So, as long as you understand this, and as long as you just apply what we have here on the chalkboard, you'll be just fine. Just trust that this is how linear algebra works. Push it through, everything will fall in place. All right, so now you're ready. Go do it. Ah, one more thing. If you don't quite get this, we have this wonderful MOOC called Linear Algebra Foundations to Frontiers. And if you go back to week three and week four of that MOOC, you'll be able to quickly figure out how this all works. All right? So that's the alternative.